Thursday, April the 25th. Lake level is about 9.15 and a half, uh, about six inches over normal pool. And, you know, like we was talking last week when I was doing the video, we just got a bunch of rain and the lake had come up a foot in 24 hours. I actually expected it to come up several more feet, but they ran the water right through here, uh, down into Bull Shoals, and Bull Shoals rose uh, several foot. Well, Gizmo's licking all my boo-boos there. Uh, but anyways, the water temperature, it's about 54, 55 degrees mm -hmm. when I put in this morning, and it's getting up to about 58 to 59. It was steadily in that 57 to 59 till what was it, Tuesday night, we got that cold front that came through. And there's just a ton of fish on beds. There's still a lot of fish in the pre-spawn, but there's a lot of fish on the beds. And even with these cold nights, I've been surprised. The areas that I found fish on beds hasn't really seemed like it's pulled them back. You know, I, I am seeing several empty beds, but I think those are fish that are probably coming up making beds in the afternoon when the water's warmer. Then when it gets cold at night, they're pulling back out. But there's a lot of fish on the deeper beds that have uh, pretty well committed and they're staying on them. Now, I'm catching fish, you know, lots of different ways. I'm catching them on a, a, a fluke. The last three or four days has predominantly been my best deal. We've had, uh, since about Monday or so, every day we've had really good days, uh, mm -hmm. good numbers of keepers, uh, quite a few fish and some good size to them. Now, Prior to that, on the weekend, you know, the bite was really up and down. I couldn't really find anything that was consistent. There's somewhat of a bottom bite going on with a tube bait. Uh, the grub hasn't been real consistent for me. The jerk bait's kind of slowing down. But I have been catching them on top water in the morning, uh, some on a spook, some on a jointed redfin. <clears throat> but what's been working better for me in the morning, we've seen several of the pockets we're fishing, there's been fish out there chasing shad in the morning. A lot of those fish are pre-spawn fish. They're in them spawning pockets, but they're still out there over 25, 30 feet of water. They're not down very deep. You know, they're up there chasing the bait. Uh, and then after that kind of dies down, we're just going along the shoreline, setting the boat in about, oh, 15, 18 foot, depending on how steep the bank is, and kind of parallel on the bank with the fluke. And the majority of the fish we're catching, I'm pretty sure, are coming up off of the beds. And some of them are probably back in there cruising, getting ready to make beds. But like I was saying, a lot of the fish we've been catching on the fluke have been females. They've been uh, good chunky fish, uh, a lot of good large mouths. And the way I've been fishing this fluke, we're fishing it on spinning rods with, you know, six or eight pound line. And no reason you can't fish it on a bait caster, but with the lighter line, uh, the bait casts a lot better and it sinks a little bit faster. Now on the six or eight pound line I've got I've got one one or two rods that I'll actually put a little swivel up about a oh, foot to sixteen inches above the hook and that'll help keep the twist out of the line and also give it a little bit of weight. Now another thing I'll do for weight is they sell these little lead nails and what I've been doing with these is, is breaking them off and putting about a half of one in the bait, especially if I got some wind blowing where I'm having trouble with the wind grabbing the line and putting a bow in it. But I just stick that all about an inch down from the head of the bait in it. Another thing you can use is like a number four finish nail. The only thing is the lead has more weight per size, you know, than the nail does. So like a, a half a Lead nail is about equivalent to the full uh, metal nail. So you get a little bit smaller deal in there. But the way we've been fishing this is we're casting it out and the water's real clear where we're fishing it. And just kind of letting the bait uh, free fall, just let it dead stick. It'll fall real slow. And about the time you can't see the bait anymore, just twitch it a couple times. And just work it back to the boat real slow like that. When you lose sight of it, twitch it and that'll raise the bait up a little bit to where you can see it. Most of the fish we're catching, we're actually seeing the fish either come up off of a bed or just coming up out of the deeper water. And even when these fish have been schooling in the mornings, you know, like I said, I've caught a couple on a czar spook, a couple on a jointed redfin, but they seem like they want the fluke a lot more than they do a hard bait up on top. 
uh, another bait that's been working in the same area for us. I've usually got one guy throwing a fluke and then another guy throwing a, a little scrounger head. This is a Lucky Strike uh, quarter ounce scrounger head. See it's got a little plastic bill on it. And what I'm using is just a little Swin Fluke Junior for the bait on it. And what we're doing with this, just casting it out uh, about the time you get your reel clicked in, just do a steady retrieve back. You don't want to see the bait. You want it kind of out of sight. But we're working it in the open water in the morning when the fish are schooling. And we're also working it down the bank when we're parallel in the bank, coming across the beds. Seems like the more active fish are coming up for, the, for this bait here. Uh, the ones that aren't quite so active are coming up for the fluke. And, you know, and we're kind of doing two or three different things in there. If the fluke bite slows down, you know, the fluke bite's been real good in the morning. In the last two or three days, <coughs> excuse me, we've had cloud cover and wind all day. So I've had to find a place to get out of the wind where you can fish it. And I'm fishing mainly in the backs of the creeks, uh, pockets off the main lake, and pockets off the creeks, areas where the fish are spawning. Uh, another thing we're throwing in the same area is little shaky heads. And I'm using several different worms. But if you notice on the heads that I'm using, I'm using a real light head, like a 16th ounce or an 8th ounce head. Most of the bites on the shaky head worm are coming as the bait's falling, or once it's got the bottom, as I'm working it back to the boat. Uh, I'm not working the bait much deeper than, say, 10 to 15 foot. And there again, I think some of these fish that we're catching are probably on beds that we can't see that are just picking the bait up. One of the reasons I'm using the real light head is the bite is so light and subtle, it's a little bit easier to feel it. And I think the fish are a little, uh, they seem to be picking it up a little bit better on the lighter head versus like a 3 16 or a quarter ounce where you can actually feel the bottom better. Uh, you know, you can't feel as much with the lighter head, but you can feel the bite better. And as far as on the worms that I'm using, I'm using some uh, Zoom 4-inch uh, finesse worms. And then I've got another deal, it's, uh, Zoom makes it, it's called a, a Swamp Crawler. It's been working real well. And it's a 6-inch bait or a Zoom trick worm. Uh, that's what's on this one here, a green pumpkin. Now the colors are green pumpkin, watermelon candy, uh, watermelon red, or straight watermelon. Doesn't really seem like it matters too much on the color. It just, uh, like I said, I'm doing a lot better with the with the lighter head. Now here's another little scrounger head. And what I've done here is, is I've dipped the tail in chartreuse. In the backs of some of these pockets where we've had that runoff, the water's a little bit stained. And that seems to be working a little better. Now, if you want to throw a, a bigger scrounger, they also make one in a half ounce. And this is something I'll throw on a bait caster, probably 17 pound line. And I'll work this over the treetops, the same place I would have worked a jerk bait uh, a few weeks ago. Now, this will come more into play as the fish are done spawning and they're back out there, you know, resting the post spawn. I've tried it in the same areas where I'm catching the fluke fish, but it seems like they're wanting the smaller bait and the lighter head on the scrounger. But this scrounger here, I've got a, a 4.8 Kitek. This one here, I've got a Magnum Super Fluke behind it. But the one that seems to be working best is the smaller one with the uh, Super Fluke Junior. And I'd like to take a second to congratulate uh, Jason Christie, who's a, a fellow uh, Team Lose guy. Uh, Jason's won the Bassmaster Elite on both shows last weekend, and the weekend before that, he won the FLW Tour on Beaver Lake, so uh, he's really been kicking some butt here lately. We'd like to congratulate him. And you know, you hear me talking about the lose reels a lot. Once I get them into people's hands, you know, usually once, I've, if I've had you out once or twice, the next time I see you, you usually got one. Uh, I mean, it, it's an awesome reel, and I know when the best fishermen in the country are fishing it and winning with it, I know there's more to it than just the fact that I like it. I mean, it's the real deal. So, I mean, if you're in the market for a reel, you need to check out some of that new uh, loose products. And also, some of the guys have been catching fish on a tube 
in a little miniature Carolina rig, anywhere from 15 to 20 foot deep. The small mouth are starting to move up. Now, the last four days or so, I've been catching them so good on the fluke back in the pockets and on that shaky head, uh, I haven't had any reason to go out on the main lake and fish deeper. Because, you know, like I said, we've been getting several fish and some good quality. But, you know, the tubes that we'll normally throw is like a watermelon, a green pumpkin, then there's also one kind of call is a baby baby puke. It's kind of like a yellow and brown works real good. Uh, watermelon red will work. And normally what we'll do is we'll take a, a little ball head like what we use on a grub or an actual tube head that's like a cylinder. Just poke it up inside the bait, poke a hole out where your line tie is and tie it on. And on the tube what we're usually doing is once we get it on the bottom, we're just kind of popping it two or three times, working it back to the boat. So a lot of things happening out there, uh, even with these cold nights that, you know, the fish have still been biting good. So if you get a chance, you need to come out and do some fishing. So until next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.